going to push the thing? Uh, any moment now. Let's get into it. Okay. Yeah. And you say, Shy City. What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Suave Light TV. I am your host, Lord Suave, with the beautiful Brittany L. Hey, guys. Man, today has been a very interesting day, to say the least. Would you agree? Yeah. Uh, well, what's the first thing you want to talk about? This was, like, happening, or? I mean, whatever, whatever. Well, not whatever, but what's, what's happening right now, man? Okay, well, my personal opinion... This is just a fun fact. So today's uh, autumn equinox. So that means that it is the technical first day of fall, mm -hmm. autumn. However, it's September 23rd, which means that, quote unquote, we all thought the first day of fall was yesterday, oh, Monday. Yeah, it's the 23rd, too. Yeah, wow. we thought yesterday, the 22nd, was the first day of fall because the last day of summer was the 21st, this Sunday. But there's actually a global time that we all follow, that Google specifically follow, follows, because that's what we basically can Google and find out things by, because it just runs evenly for everyone. So long story short, it's the earth tilting, basically, so that we get an equal total amount of hours of sunshine, just as much as everyone below the um, equator. the equator would, right, in the southern hemisphere would get. So it was a really sunny, pretty day. At the same time, it was absolutely insane traffic, traveling. I don't know if anyone else experienced this, but driving was like a nightmare. Even us getting in here and getting set up. Took us forever. And I don't ever, even ever. understand anything about this autumn <laughs> equinox thing. It was something I just, I, I find astrology and everything about like the celestial world to be very interesting. So actually the first day or the first time fall started today was at 2.29 a.m. So, I felt the chill at 2.29 a.m. today, too. It probably ran through, like, feel it. It was cold. So, basically, happy fall. I hope that your day wasn't as crazy as ours. If it was, let us know so we're not alone, please, because it took a lot to get here and do this. A lot. Jumping into that, iCloud. So, apparently... Speaking of the air. <laughs> speaking of the air, iCloud, there has been a lot of controversy around mm. this iCloud thing. Some people are saying that it's safe. Some people are saying that it's not safe. What do you it's think? Not it's not safe. It's not safe. I don't like it. That. I don't like it. And I like to, um, to uh -huh. say whoever's hacking in, why are you going to get people's pictures? Allegedly. Like Michael Jackson's picture. Allegedly. Can we get something that's valuable? Like maybe log into uh, Experian and fix everybody's credit? Or logging into Sally Mae and wiping everybody's debt. I don't care about celebrity nudes anymore. Like, you We've know what I mean? We've seen them all. They put them up themselves on Instagram. Stop yeah. it. But I must admit, the best looking one, in my opinion, is Megan Good. Oh man, she's amazing. She's beautiful. But. I saw that one picture, she's like flashing and like there's a little baby behind her. Oh yeah. In a in in a restaurant. Come on. I mean Put your titty away. Public places, you know. She was doing it to her husband apparently, so you know, public displays of affection with the nipple. I mean, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Can I say nipple? You I said it anyway. <laughs> I don't care. So I thought that was kinda interesting. Um but yo, let's be real, like oh, but you heard about what Dwayne Wade and um Gabrielle Union because Gabrielle Union got caught too. Yeah, so what she's wait, what doing. What apparently happened? they're getting the FBI involved because they wanna you know, they wanna handle the situation properly with the right authority. So more power to you. That's um, a waste of money. I mean, the audience you can waste money when you got their kind of money. I'm not mad at it. I mean do whatever you can do to get these people. But before you get these people, let's make sure the people hack Sally Mae and Experian transdoing the right, Equifax. Stop blocking our potential blessings coming. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you though. What is an inappropriate conversation that can be had in the workplace? That can be had or yeah. can't be had. An inappropriate like, what is some inappropriate conversation that should not take place in the workplace? Inappropriate of all of always is going to lead towards something dealing with sex. Okay. It's always gonna be Sexually, really, sexually related. Mm -hmm. Wow, tongue twisters today. And. Is that autumn jigaboo? <laughs> 
For whatever real. that is, man. The equinox. Oh, equinox. It's messing up. It's shit, really. It's nigga, bro. Wow. Okay. We are gonna work that out. We are gonna fix that. Don't <laughs> even worry about it. But yeah, like you were saying. So it's, it's definitely something that's sexually related. Mm -hmm. That's what messes up, I believe the whole dynamic sometimes in a work relationship with someone like you can have a great rapport with someone like have this ever happened to you you had a great rapport with somebody yeah. and then they just took it a little too far every single day in my work <laughs> every single day so what, like what's an example man this is not in my current workplace in the previous workplace so um you know I don't know you just have a conversation and it's going funny and they're like whoa like what's that in your pants and it's like whoa wait what like, what did you that's just say? I mean, that's an inappropriate conversation. But, I mean, it's flattering. Absolutely, it's flattering. But, you know, some things should be had in the workplace. Some things shouldn't be had in the workplace. And conversations based around sex and... Um, uh, what's that other thing people are talking about now? Uh, religion and uh, politics. Those three things, in my opinion, should not be had in the workplace. Sex, religion, politics. And those are all three of the juiciest topics. So it's kind of like one of those things, I think, where as a woman, for instance, if I'm leaving the bathroom and like my dress is like tucked up in my skirt, like in my underwear or something or my stockings. Mm -hmm. First of all, ladies, you should feel that breeze before you walk out. Like, let's pay attention. But it feels weird if someone like if I feel like it would be weird if a male said that to me. Like, I feel like just note to men, like go say something to a, another female and be like, hey, you should let her know because that can just kind of. Start a whole weird. So what if a, what if you walked out of the bathroom and you had like toilet paper under your shoe? Oh, that's nothing. Okay. I'm talking about like if my, like the the like tangas, the boy shorts are showing. You got a thong on something, and now it's just oh. your whole booty is just. Oh, okay. And you walking like you cute, and now you just got your whole business in the middle of the office. Well, because then I feel like that just opens a door for. So it was pink, right? That's my favorite color. Like some some creep. Sound like a creep. <laughs> creep, right? So some creep stuff home. that'll come. Exactly. So, but politics and religion, you think so too? Yeah, man. Because you never know somebody's political stance. You know, Democratic or Republican or neutral. You know, some people don't like to have those conversations, especially when the elections were going on with like the Obama are coming. and um, who was Obama running against again? Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney. You know, I work in a very diverse environment so you, some people were walking around with the uh, Mitt Romney and Sarah Palin right was it Sarah Palin no it wasn't Sarah Palin it was this guy I think I forget his name that's how irrelevant that conversation is <laughs> but you know people were oh it was Mitt Romney and McCain wasn't it John McCain was it John McCain oh was that Sarah Palin and John McCain it was Anywho. Sarah Palin and John McCain because he was 111 and, and she was, was ridiculous slow <laughs> Anyway, so, you know, some people don't like those conversations, and I and I understand it, so I try to stay away from those type of conversations, okay. so. Mm. I think politics can be interesting within a certain realm because, I mean, it kind of gives you an idea about who, who a person is. Um, so can a person be a great Republican? Can a person be a bad Republican? Can no, it just gives you, no, when they give you some of their standpoints as to why they feel a certain way about things. For instance, oh, okay. We have elections coming up. Today is actually also National Voter Registry Day. So if you're not registered to vote. Please go out and do so. Because too many people have fought for all of us to be able to have the opportunity. Men, women, black, white, whatever. Look, we've all been in there. Oh, I go vote. Oh, I don't think about all the people who fought for you to have the opportunity to do so. So Sounds, sounds like a message moment. Message. message. Go vote. Go get registered to vote. It matters. Now... I'll get into that too because then some people say it doesn't work, it doesn't matter, whatever, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But I feel like if you have an opportunity to exercise a right, why not? I think that that's kind of paramount specific. I think it's very fair to say. Absolutely. So it's like I have the right to freedom, but I'm just going to chill and be a slave to the system of whatever. Okay, we, we all are slaves to a system of some sort. Let's keep that real. It's kind of deep. But exercise the rights that you have and you'll learn more in that process. So very, very true. But speaking of voting in politics, did you hear about what happened at the White House? Somebody got fired. Somebody needs to get fired. If they didn't, there's a problem. Yo, so long story short, this Iraq decorated veteran scales the fence of the White House and somehow 
out of with all of this security, somehow, some way, gets into the White House. Inside, not on the lawn, not to the front door, not like chilling around the windows. Inside the White House. Inside the White House, and this man had, I think, he had a knife in his pocket or something like that. They said and he had eight hundred rounds of ammunition in his car. And eight hundred rounds of ammunition in his car, which is crazy. You know what I mean? And apparently, this isn't the first time this man has been seen around the White House. His excuse was he just had to have a conversation with the president about something of dire um, needs or something. I don't know, but it was pretty insane. And on top of that, um, what what happened? They said that this gentleman basically is being locked up now and he could see or face up to 10 years in prison. And the prosecutor is also requesting that he not be released on bail, which is pretty major and you know the president being the president luckily you know the family wasn't inside of the white house at the time but luckily the president is saying you know he likes his detail he's very satisfied with the secret service as he should stay as politically correct as you can him. bygones but it's a great thing that he's supporting you know the people who essentially protect his life so i don't know half the people that are protecting his life don't even like him so let's keep that 100 that's my opinion. You can okay. sign, sale, and deliver it. I said it. So, first of all, if, if, if this was any other situation, I don't know how many people have watched a show called House of Cards. Yeah, House of Cards is a crazy show on, on Netflix. On Netflix. Oh, Amazing. man. Amazing. So, if you, watch, if you watch House of Cards, it is definitely, you know, theatrically based, but gives mm -hmm. you kind of an idea of what politics are. And I, it's a quote that I love. It wasn't on that show, but I saw it recently on Instagram. It was like, if you lie to the government, it's a felony. If they lie to us, it's called politics. Wow. Message. I ain't never heard that before. That's and that's deep. reality. Because the thing is, you can have all the good intention and this and that and try to hold back or not do something and everything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. And then you're indicted on God knows what kind of charges. But when it happens year after year after year after year after year in all of these elections and things that come up, prime mm -hmm. example, the House of Representatives is going to be up for re-election very soon. Hence why we're saying go vote. So all the things that have changed in your neighborhood, some people who are on unemployment, the Speaker of the House, who is Boehner. John, ba John Boehner. Oh, he needs to go. But that's just my opinion. People get out and vote. Because all these people who are making decisions and choices about who you are and how you live your life are still sitting in positions that we're not doing anything about it to have them be the way I'm looking for replaced. Speaking of that, wouldn't it be dope if you could vote from your phone? No, because there would be a whole lot of stuff. If somebody happening. would hack it. Somebody would hack it. Somebody be hacking, and uh, exactly. I think it would be. I, I'm gonna work on creating that app and that patent for that app. So don't try to steal my stuff. Thank you. Oh, and I also got my iPhone six. Um, the day that it came out. Right. Um, I really enjoy it, and I think it's pretty cool. That's all I need Team to say. Team Android. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm loving this. Uh, galaxy over here don't look at me like that i wish i had like an imaginary like uh what is it called uh, the that sign like the, the the equal and less than or greater than less than because the greater sign would be me because i have an iphone that's just my opinion on the matter um and i'm gonna use a phrase that we're trying not to use anymore or no so or yeah i, I think i might try or yeah or yeah or no. But yo, <laughs> serious topic for a second. I want to know, people always say that once a blank, always a blank. So that blank could be a cheater, once an abuser, once a, um, a quitter, always a quitter. So what do you think about that? Do you believe in that stereotype, once a blank, always a blank? I think... I think everyone has the opportunity to grow, to change, to become something better. Mm -hmm. But habits do speak to actions that constantly show up. If you've been cheated on three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve times, and you have that from the same person, and you're just that forgiving, and you feel like it's whatever, I think that you have to at some point know what your value in yourself is to know that you deserve better. Mm. So it, I really don't even think that it's a question about if that person will change, it's like, if you will change. Like, there's habitual liars. There's people who literally cannot fight the urge to lie. Like, 
I feel like you're able to change mm -hmm. somewhat. To an extent. It's gonna take a long time though. What do you think? I don't like to hold people down or accuse, you know what? Trick me once, what is it? Trick me once, shame on fool you. Once, fool, shame on me. Oh, fool, no, fool, fool me, me once, once, shame on you. Fool me twice, twice, shame on me. Right. So I guess if something happens consistently, then maybe. But I mean, who says a little prayer and a little holy water can't change that situation? I don't know. I'm just talking. But I mean, I think it's a pretty interesting idea or concept. Uh, but I don't know. Cheaters cheat, liars lie, thieves steal. But I mean, who said you can't change? You ever heard, if you lie, you steal, if you steal, you kill? I never heard that before. You never heard that before? I never heard that before. Well, I've heard that in a lot of like... It was in the Bible? No, it's not in the uh, Bible. Okay. It's something like your grandma or somebody older who said, because it's just kind of this progressive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. action, so that if you'll lie, you'll do something to cover up what your initial action or whatever was or, or the truth about something right if you lie you'll steal so the whole concept is that you're willing to take something that doesn't belong to you from somebody else or from somewhere okay and that added to it is that if you steal you'll kill because if you will do so much to take something from somebody who's to say that you won't take the next level and really end somebody so that they are in the situation so that you can get what you want I think it's all progressive, so if you're not putting the effort into being a better person, I mean, like you said, I don't want to lock anybody into a box, blah, right, blah, 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 right. but some people build that box around themselves and stand in it. And then they decide to stand out of it, so I don't, you know, okay. judge people on that matter. But, I mean, bygones, it is what it is and it ain't what it ain't, so if you decide that you want to change for whatever, you know, if you no longer want to be a quitter and you want to run that marathon that you've been trying to run forever, you know, and you want to cross that finish line, then do you. On that note, the NFL. And no, I'm not going back to the abuse and things of that nature. I want to know, can, being African-American, right? Right. Can an African-American on the field, because, you know, on the field of football, there are a lot of, a lot of tension, a lot of aggression. If you hit me a certain way, can I use the N-word? Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Can a black man say it to a black man as opposed to a white man say it to a black man or a black man say it to a white man? This is touchy. So, I, mean, I just want to know your thoughts and then I'll give my thoughts on it. Well, give me, can I have some context around what, what, where is this coming from? Okay. Let me hear what you're So, basically, the starting quarterback of... The 49ers, Colin Kaepernick, who happens to be an African American, adopted by a white family. Um, rumor is he's an African American adopted by a white family. Yeah, when he was younger, he was adopted by a white family, so okay. he he, okay. he was raised with white parents. Okay, it's like that movie. What movie? It was a movie where it was like a black football player and he had like white parents. Oh, Julia the Roberts. the, like the longest mom. yard. Isn't that is that the longest yard? I don't know. It's something like that. Yeah. Oh, no. The, the the blind side. There you go. The blind side. One okay. I was wondering. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, so apparently Colin Kaepernick, an African-American starting quarterback for the 49ers, said the N-word to a player for from Chicago Bears. But the crazy thing, and that guy's name is like Houston or something. Anyway, the crazy thing is it was Colin Kaepernick, it was Houston, and then it was the referee. So the ref heard it, but Houston didn't hear it. So Houston didn't hear it. So Colin Kaepernick said, you know, why Why am I getting a penalty flag? I think it was like 15 yards for um, excessive profanity or something. And then at the end of the game, he got an $11,000 fine. So yeah, but I mean, that's a drop in the bucket to Colin Kaepernick. What's still an $11,000 fine? People get $25,000, $50,000 fines every game. It is what it is. They just make that wow. kind of money. Anywho, so Houston was like, yo, I didn't hear anything, right? So then about a week later, Houston then goes on to say, he's called me an N-word. You know, he said it. But after he got the report and now he wants to say something? Okay. So that's my question for you. How do you, how do you feel about that? Can us as African-Americans playing in an aggressive game like football use that kind of language with one another? Your thoughts? Oh boy. Okay. The N word is always a delicate situation because mm -hmm. some people are 
very comfortable with it. Some people are completely against it. Mm. Some people use it in the their home, own home, mm. around friends, that kind of thing. I feel like you have to know your surroundings. Okay. I think that that's one of those things. It's called code switching. Code switching is when I can be in a professional environment yep. and I can speak with the most proper of diction and enunciation to all of my words. And then when I'm around my girlfriends, family, whoever, and my family's from the South. So like there's a certain accent, there's a certain slang that you use. You have to know your space and place. Right, right. I don't think that in a situation we're just looking at the bare facts of it all bare if facts. they were playing a football game pickup game with some friends it's fall kids are you know people are out there doing that right now if they were out mm-hmm. there doing it right now of course it wouldn't be an issue but because of the realm that you're in and because of the hue of your skin mm-hmm. I don't care how you look at this you're going to be looked how you think of this you're going to be looked at stringently and okay. any way that somebody can find a way to get more money out of your pocket of course they will oh he said this write him up oh and he said it's so terrible did a flag on the play <laughs> exactly. They're going to do that. Right. So I think that you have to know how to, for instance, sit here and have this conversation. And then when I go home, be like, hey, girl, what's up? I mean, you know, we're just chilling today. And I mean, like, I can go straight to that. Okay. Just as much as I know. I'm not going to go into my job and talk like that. And that's how I think athletes have to look at it, too. Okay. It's your job. Uh, so essentially, what, what, are you, what, what are you saying? Are you saying that because of your professional professionalism or your career you shouldn't say it in the workplace yeah okay because especially if you know that, that if, if he can get a fine for it yeah no yeah saying. okay that was my exact what about you oh it's, I, I agree wholeheartedly okay. I think it in the workplace regardless of where you work it should never be the conversation should never be had with blacks with blacks blacks with whites whites with blacks Asians with Latino because then somebody's gonna get too comfortable yep and they'd be like, hey, what's up, my... Ooh, and yep. then it's going to turn into a whole nother situation exactly. that nobody's ready exactly. to handle. Exactly. So, next time, if you... But he said he didn't say it. So, you know, but the ref who was white said that he said it. So, it was one ref who was white and two players who were black. So, one guy one guy said, I didn't hear it. One guy said, I didn't say it. The ref said, I heard it. A week later, the guy said, I didn't say it. The other guy said, I heard it. But you're black, I'm black. It's just what we say. That's what he said. That's it's what we say. So I didn't look at it any type of way. But anyway, I say, you know, next time just don't do it. So, who, or just so, don't do it so the ref flagged the play or flagged yeah. the so so was the ref offended? Because if, if the person that it was supposedly directed to or wasn't offended, that's like having files ro- brought against you and there was no complaint. I mean, at the end of the day, in the NFL, there are a lot of rules that we do not understand. Right. And, they don't even understand. And that they don't understand. But nonetheless, this is in an organization of professionalism and athletes. So speaking of that organization of professionalism and athletes, didn't okay. you say something about they were gonna have a new uh rule about illegal substances and all this other stuff? Yeah. So the NFL is very tricky, very, very interesting. So anyway, they have this thing called the NFLPA, which is the National League wait, National Football, Football League, League. Associ- Players Association. And Basically, about the end of the offseason of last year, they had a meeting, the owners, the players, and the players' officials or whatever. So they came up with these rules about banned substances, and they agreed on everything, right? Mm -hmm. So everything under the sun, you can't take it. Out, weed, drugs, you know, pills, pills, steroids, none of that. So this offseason, a lot of players were taking these substances okay. and then when they came in to get their physicals or peeing in the cup or whatever they did they all got suspended a lot of players got suspended so they went to the drawing board on week two and uh, uh, the the officials, officials. the officials okay. the league and the the schools and all, all of that anyway okay. so now they took a lot of the stuff away like the mm-hmm. receiver who plays for denver his name is um He's pretty good too. What's this guy's name? Don't ask me. Yeah, you wouldn't know. Anyway, the receiver <laughs> That's not to say who that plays for Denver, this guy popped a Molly at the Kentucky Derby. Popped a Molly, I'm sweating. Popped a Molly at the Kentucky Derby. Popped a Molly, I'm sweating. Anyway, he pops a Molly at the Kentucky Derby, and then he goes in to get his physical. It was still in the system. He was suspended for four games, right? Okay. So two weeks into the season, 
they decided to change all of these rules. They said if you take banned substances in the off season, it won't affect you for the the next season. So a lot of players got off. So and they, they're playing. So they have to make sure that it is out of their system by the time they get they get to their physical. Yeah. So they, they, they changed a lot of stuff up. Let me tell you what that's about. That's not about anybody's health, freedom, fun. That's about money. Because if you have droves of uh, players being, what is it? Um, They get what? Penalties? They get... Yeah. You mean like fines? And, fines, so like they can't uh -huh. play the game or whatever. Right, right, suspension. So they get suspension, that's the word, yeah. Okay. So if you have droves of players getting suspended, that means you don't have your full team. Wes, Wes, Wes Walker. That's his name? Wes Walker, yeah. He's if, a good player too. If you have all of these players being suspended, that's about money because now people aren't going to come out and buy the tickets that you want because they don't see their player. They know that their um, favorite player's not there. Mm -hmm. The team's not going to play as effectively, so that right. means that they're going to potentially lose, not get to certain championships and things that you want them to. None of this has anything to do with about their health because if it was really about their health, they would have some sort of way of saying, hey, if you're going to do these things and blah, 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 let's educate you as to why. And I don't know if maybe this is or isn't happening on that side of the game, whatever, but... It's about money. It's not about these people's health. It's not about these players' health. It's like I just said, we want our prime real estate. I paid how much for this boy to come on my team, and he better play right and do what he needs to do. So now it's kind of like this leeway space. Oh, well, when you're not with us, it's the off season. You can live your life however you want to. But when we own you for that however many months it is, you better fly right and do what you need to do. That's what it is. <laughs> that was a little deep. Let's, get a, let's, let's make it a little bit lighter, though. Um... What's been going on in your world? Oh, <laughs> My world has been crazy. Cray, cray. That's all I'm going to say right now. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, 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 so, I, I, life has been crazy, but I try to think of it. Those situations are challenges for you to succeed in mm -hmm. rather than problems that have to be fixed. Because if you change your outlook about how a problem is and turn it into a challenge, you can always come out victorious or at least you'll learn something. So. Wow. That was pretty decent. Do you have some sort of quote for... Does she have some sort of quote for, for quote? like, embracing the good and everything? Like, or because If I had to say a quote, like, so you're saying to embrace life? No, I, no I, I, I felt like you were coming on with some sort of quote, but I know I have a quote for you. Go ahead. <clears throat> let me, let me, let me hear clear my quote. throat. The greatest pleasures in life is doing what people say that you can't do. So basically... Like what we're doing right now, these are this is our passion. But there are people who are saying, "Hey, it's not good enough. Oh, you should probably do this or probably do that." Listen, as long as you do what you want to do in life, can't nobody stop you. And that's just my little tidbit on the issue. I'll, if I could say one thing, if I could say one thing that really is important to me is the idea, like the concept of happiness, because. There are people in third world countries that are blissfully happy. And I think that we kind of get so stuck into this concept of what happiness is on a monetary, materialistic basis. Mm -hmm. So there's a quote by, I think I'm saying the name right, Shang Tzu, and it's happiness is the absence of striving for happiness. So when you kind of take that moment and mm -hmm. say, like, look around and find your gratitude. The I feel like I tweeted that earlier. Really? I think I did. Or maybe about a week ago. That. <laughs> Go smurder. Go smurder. See? Find some happiness. Just make a joke. Just be happy in whatever space, place, whatever that you can be in because mm -hmm. nothing is permanent. So you honestly should enjoy it while it's here. Not even sadness. So you kind of have to find you know what? I got a bottle of fresh, clean water to drink from today. Oh, you know how you. many people don't have that? How many? Millions across the world. A lot. So you have to think about the things that really you can celebrate as victories in your life. Mm -hmm. If you're constantly focused on, it's called the law of attraction, and it works. If you're constantly focused on your lack, you will always see more lack. But if you're constantly focused on your gratitude, you'll never run out of it. You'll never run out of it. Oh, wow. 
You have to stay focused on what you have an abundance of around you. That's an amazing quote, actually. Thank you. I made that up. Did you? Yeah. You need to write that down. Hold up. You need to definitely write that down because I really thought that that was like, that was deep. So. Yeah, I try. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I'm a little smart. I mean, you know. Don't come for my life. You know, Lincoln University, <laughs> Temple University, man. We Temple out here. Temple University and do, Philadelphia do College things. of Osteopathic Medicine. Woo, woo. Oh. Yeah, that was the master's degree. Oh, okay. I'm a little smart or something. Uh, or not. And you just proved my point. <laughs> <laughs> but once again, thanks for watching Suave Life TV. And remember, if you like it, we love it. Oh, and also... Please comment below. Tell us what you want to talk about because I know that there are a lot of things that you might have on your mind that you just might want to get out there. And soon we'll be looking to add people to the panel discussion that we can just talk about whatever openly just bring and freely. Bring some love into the room so we can all talk bring about it. All. it. Bring it all. <laughs> bring it all. Stay so wild, my friends. See you guys. Do, do, do.